Hello, dear listener, uh, dear viewer. My name is Mumpuli Kiluruma Mokhobi, your host of this wonderful show. We do our best to bring you powerful, original, and dynamic content each and every time. And uh, over the year or so that we've been in operation, there's one guest who uh, has developed a relationship with us. And uh, you won't believe it if I tell you that this is his fifth visit to us. And uh, we intend to keep using his vast experience and his vast services. Uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome you, Mr. Mohamed Zifranc, to the program. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Mohamed. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm happy to be here I'll for the be, fifth time. Yeah, number five. <laughs> and I'd yeah. be appreciative if you could tell the guests, because I'm sure there are some who don't know you, who've never heard of Key Wealth, and never heard of you. Tell them who you are and what you do. Yeah, Key Wealth, we, we, are, we are a life changer. We specialize in financial education and wealth management. In actual fact, what we do is we help people, we educate people in terms of financial literacy and other aspects of their life and help them to create wealth. So we always say that our, our, our specialties are training, advisory, and risk management. We've been in business for over six years now, and we have been doing well in helping a lot of individuals and corporates. We're going to talk today about um, debt management. The Bible says something strange that it says that uh, the borrower is a slave to the lender. Um, and it seems as if the wisest man and arguably the richest man that ever lived doesn't like debt. Um, and there are all sorts of arguments about debt, good debt, bad debt. We're going to talk about that. What is your attitude towards debt in general and why is it important to talk about it today? Yeah, de debt, uh, it lives with us. Ever since, um, if you read the financial books, they will tell you that ever since that the US dollar was taken away from gold, all money is backed up by debt. So a lot of people do not understand it. You're referring to 1972 when uh, 19, Richard Nixon 1970, 71, uh, removed, removed the dollar from the gold standard. Uh, yes, removed yeah. the dollar from the gold standard. So then they started printing so much money and the US dollar lost value. So basically, now all money is debt. Most of the money actually, let me say, money is backed up by debt. And it's debt is created continuously uh, because if you know the, the, the financial system, it will tell you that uh, there's the central banking system, there's the commercial banks, and also there's the, the central government, if, if you may say, mm. which we then will say Ministry of Finance. Mm. That's like the, the three-legged uh, structure that are there. And the fourth person there is the consumer, the one that ends up consuming the debt from the commercial banks. So if, if, if at all everyone in these structures understand what debt is, why don't, why don't we understand it at an individual level? Because, you know, I always say uh, national debt, a country has got debt. Mm. Even uh, as, as much as an individual or a household has got debt. If you think about it, when we do a budget, when uh, the budget of Botswana when, when it's done, mm. and it runs on a deficit, what, ha what then happens is the country will go out and borrow. Either, uh, you know, creating bonds or maybe just borrowing from, if you, even uh, same as bonds, but borrowing from maybe IMF, World Bank, and, and yeah. there's foreign debt. Uh, you realize that... And I'm told African countries always borrow at higher rates. I don't know if that is true. <laughs> kind of. We, at higher rates, they charge us at higher rates. Yeah, higher interest rates compared to Western countries. I've read that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And by the way, if you, if you go read the biography of uh, Lincoln Yu, uh, the founding father of Singapore, there is a point where he's, uh, he made sure that his country is never on a deficit so that uh, the Singaporean dollar can always be up. Mm. Because oh, continuously money goes down because the more debt in the system and then the more you know it also creates something mm. like inflation mm. because i think of it just to show you that uh, in 1991 the price of coke was uh 90 tebe mm. right now it's more than it's about around eight pula ten pula right there it's mm. because of inflation so now all the system because now the uh, money is not backed up by gold is backed up by debt continuously when new money is introduced in the system Inflation goes up. Yeah. yeah. Now let's let's get more specific. And I remember in 2016, during the debate between Mrs. Clinton and uh, now President Trump, Trump was very bold to call himself King of Debt. Mm -hmm. So it begs the question: What is debt, and why would people like Trump call themselves themselves King of Debt? Yes, I mean, debt, like I said before, is something that exists within our financial setup. Mm -hmm. And it's simply where you go borrow money, where you, where you end up borrowing someone money and you are charged interest. Mm 
Mm. Uh, and it helps you to acquire things that you couldn't acquire using your own income. For example, how long will it take you to save a million? Mm. It will take you so many years. But if you can simply walk into a, a commercial bank and then apply for a million two days. It's credited into your account. Mm -hmm. So think about it. You, you, debt accelerates certain uh, acquisition, uh, acquisition of certain uh, uh, financial instruments mm. or, or, or we can say assets, financial assets basically, mm. let's say that. So debt is when you borrow someone mm. and, and it, it exists in many ways. I mean, even mm. if, if I know uh, in this day and age, people have got all oh, I mean it's been existing for a while, Mozello, where you borrow me money and you charge me interest, which is called compound interest, right? Mm. Mm. I'll explain what compound interest is later. Mm. So it's, that is simply when, you, when, when, I, when I owe you money and people are so overwhelmed because now uh, they want to acquire everything on debt, but they don't understand how it works. How it works. Yeah. So it, it, it is like what you say Donald Trump was saying is the king of debt. Succe most successful people and wealthy people have found out how debt works and are able to acquire and generate wealth mm. uh, using debt. Using so-called good debt. Good debt. Okay. Yeah. Now, the other question that I want you to... And sometimes we have to go back to the basics. What is the real difference between debt and credit? Yeah, debt and credit is it, it's the story of uh, before and after. Mm. Because when you, uh, when you qualify for something, or let's say uh, you, you've got a credit to acquire something, like you're given a credit card, it's already a credit, but once you use that money, it becomes debt. You owe the bank money. Uh -huh. So it's a story of before and after. So uh, that's basically the difference. Uh, and you realize that... The bank gives you credit, mm -hmm. but you become indebted. You become indebted. You start oh, borrowing. You start uh, oh, owing the bank the mm -hmm. money, which is now called debt. Yeah. And, and, and like you're saying with Trump, that uh, he's the king of debt. But you also know that they say modern day slaves are not in handcuffs. They're in debt mm -hmm. uh, because people don't understand how debt works. So the key difference is understanding. The key difference is understanding. Okay, so um, let's get deeper into that. Um, you say that it is a debt that is created to help you. How is debt created as a tool to help you as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I mean, uh, even in entrepreneurship, even you want, to, you want to scale up your business, we always talk about debt versus equity. Mm -hmm. uh, even, in, for example, a house like this, uh, it, it has what's called equity. Let's say you value it uh, and it valued a certain amount. You can actually go to the bank and release equity. Mm -hmm. you can, you know, they give you money and the house becomes collateral. So you find that now you can have access to cash to expand your business. Yeah. So, uh, That's why they call it equity release. They call it equity release. Yeah. So you bond your, your property so then they give you equity against uh, against the encumbrance of that property. Of that property. Mm. So even in the household, it helps you to even acquire more property. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a house, you have built a house and it's got equity. You can release that equity and build more house to generate income. Mm -hmm. uh, and and like and in reference to what we said earlier, if you if you earn a, 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 a let's say ten thousand bullock, mm. you know that helps Not you 10, to even 000. have ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah. That that helps you to even have about, you know, qualify to even about 500,000, 400, I'm just saying the figures, uh, you find you can have access to more money than what you what you actually earn on a, on a monthly basis. So mm. that in itself, it's an opportunity to acquire certain things. Mm. Uh, so just like I was saying, the understanding. So that, that, that is a tool. Even when it's designed, it's a, it's a tool that was designed to help you. Mm. Uh, uh, everything is. But I think it's one of the most misunderstood tools. It, it's the most misunderstood and misused tools, by the way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, most it's both misunderstood and misused. And misused. Mm. And misused. Okay. Yeah. Well, our purpose here at Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom is to, to help people get out of that rut of yes. being mis mis misusing debt mm -hmm. and then misunderstanding it. Yeah. So help them do so by explaining different types of debt. What are yes. the different types? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of people are within, uh, uh, they've taken different kinds of debt. Mm. Or different types of debts, but uh, they don't even understand that they operate the same. Mm. Uh, I'll give you uh, two kinds, for example. There is debt that is unsecured and debt that is secured. Mm -hmm. See, un uh, secured debt is the one that we reference. We we're, we're giving an example with, mm. like a house. Mm -hmm. You buy a house. They will tell you, ask you what what security do you have. It becomes collateral. It becomes security to the to to, to the loan. Mm -hmm. All right. But then, if you take a personal loan, it's unsecured mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. usually what happens is that loans that are secured the interest rate is lower 
than the ones that are unsecured. Mm -hmm. um, there's something called prime. Maybe just to explain how that works. Mm -hmm. Remember I said earlier that the central prime bank... Prime is determined by the Bank of Botswana. By Bank of Botswana. Bank of Botswana, there's something called the lending rate and there's something called prime. Mm -hmm. Lending rate is determined by Bank of Botswana and prime is always lending rate plus 1.5. Mm -hmm. They have a committee there. Committee. They, uh, yeah, yeah. what it's called, from committee... It's responsible for yeah for setting up yeah the, yeah so you find that you find that uh, Bank of Botswana controls it controls the interest rate which mm -hmm. is the lending rate mm -hmm. it also controls the uh, the inflation it also controls the printing of money and money in circulation mm -hmm. so what basically what I uh, was saying in reference to debt mm -hmm. is that what happens is that the, uh, the commercial banks will get money from Bank of Botswana or will be given an interest, a, a prime rate or lending rate to be able to use and pr prime is always lending rate plus 1.5. Yeah. So let's give an example just for calculation purposes. Mm. Let's say if the, the if say prime is 5%, mm. all right? With, with a secured loan, you can actually get maybe prime or prime minus or even prime plus one or two, but unsecured because unsecured basically means that there's risk involved in there. Yeah, like yeah, if someone yeah. gives you a personal loan of 500,000, yeah. uh, you go out and do whatever you do. There's no asset behind that. Then the risk is high. So usually banks, we see them uh, with high interest. You can even pay up to 20, 25, uh, high interest rates because there's risk in there. Up Those are like, 25% even. Yeah. So that's like, like two it's different. It's almost like Bomachoni said that. Yeah. It's like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, micro lending. Micro lending. Mm -hmm. Micro lending, they also use a different kind of, you see, let me, now let me explain. Uh, I wanted to explain it later, but let me explain it now so that people understand. Yeah. There's something called compound interest. Mm -hmm. And according to Albert Einstein, compound interest is the eighth world wonder. Mm. Those that don't understand it, they pay it. Mm. Those that understand it, they earn it. Mm -hmm. Now, the way compound interest is, is structured is in such a way that it's interest on interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for example, you're talking about Bumachonis, you're talking about, let's give an example of Motelo. Mm. You borrow me a, a, a thousand mm. uh, and then I, you put 20% on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. End of month, I owe you 1,200, 1.2, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you put 20%. Do you put 20% on 1.2, on 1,000 or on 1.2? 1 1.2. On 1.2. So it's interest. You put interest on money that has already accumulated, accrued interest. Yeah. So clearly, uh, as, you know, the understanding is the compound interest is interest on interest. So as I was giving you an ex example of between um, a mortgage and like a personal loan or a secured and unsecured loans. Mm. You find that now, unsecured, there's no security behind. So the interest that is charged is high. And interest is usually charged annually. Mm -hmm. Even though some can be, that annual interest can also be calculated monthly or daily, but it's usually calculated on the balance. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, that, that's why sometimes when we tell people when interest rates are cut, you can even maintain your, 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 your installment because once you, you maintain your installment, you reduce the the, the, the balance. In other words, just because you can pay less, you shouldn't just fall for it. You shouldn't when just the, fall for it. When the bank reduces. Yeah, because because it's compounded and it's charged on mm. or in, it's compounded and charged on the on the balance. Mm. All right? So, now we're talking about different types of debt. So, I said this there's secured and unsecured. Secured is the one that is collateral, that is security behind it. Unsecured has no security. Mm. And but, but also there's different kinds uh, you know, you find that someone might get a credit card. By the way, people must also go and study because the credit card doesn't doesn't charge the same interest as a normal loan because the credit card is money that you know is there you can use. And nowadays, a lot of uh, even shops, a lot some of some can go over to probably thirty thirty percent. So, so this, they cha they charge interest. Uh, yeah, they charge interest different at, at a different frequency than mm. than it, it goes to thirty percent because it charges per day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's different from the one that you are told is charged annually, you know. Mm. Um, so you realize that, that it, so it's it, it that's why it needs financial literacy because people mm -hmm. need to understand what's the difference between me getting a credit card. It, there's not, I'm, I'm not saying a credit card is bad, I'm mm. just saying that understand how to use it and understand how, how, how much you are charged as interest. So I was talking about a credit card, there's personal loans, there's car loans, mm. right? Mm. Uh, there's uh, there's mortgages, and there's this uh, business loans, there's so many loans, but all these loans are structured simple. You just borrow money from an, a, an entity and then they charge you interest and then you pay back that money. By the way, we always say, if you, don't, if you go out and borrow money mm -hmm. without understanding, it's like saying, borrow me all this money in the future. Let me use it now or let me spend it now and I can suffer later paying it back. Mm -hmm. Because suffering basically means that you did not plan for it, for it because mm -hmm. at Keyworth, we always say that, Every time you take a loan, all your loans must be paid by someone, not you. 
Mm -hmm. When it, when when you are the one paying the loan, you become a slave to whoever has given you that money. So you're fulfilling the prophecy of Solomon. Then you become a, <laughs> you become a slave to the lender. You become a slave to the lender. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is those different kinds. And and the, and when you talk about um, taking up debt, people tend to think that if I go out and take out debt for the first time. That's only that's the, the only category categorized as debt. But there are certain debts that you take and they have different impacts on what they do to your loans. For example, they, we, you have heard of words like uh, consolidation, mm. uh, words like uh, refinancing and low to loan top up. Mm. Most of these, when you do them, every time you do them, your loan starts from scratch. Because mm. it's recalculated to mean that now... You must reschedule the whole thing. This must reschedule the whole thing. Mm. Because you're consolidating, you're taking all the loans from wh whoever you owe into one loan, and then okay. you pay one installment. Refinance, like I was saying, you release equity from your, your asset. Uh, top up is where now you had, you had uh, a loan, and then now you go take another... Let's say you want more money. Let me ask you this. You go take up more I money. think this moves on to our next nugget. Yeah. Is there a challenge for, for you know household debt in Botswana, and exactly what is the challenge and how can it be tackled? There, there is a huge challenge. Like I, you know, I was referring to lack of financial literacy. Mm. There is a huge challenge of household debt in Botswana. Uh, when you compare it to countries with millions and millions of people working in the formal sector that that uh, that have access to loans, you realize that in comparison, our loan book is higher mm. more than those countries. Household loan. Our household. Mm. Debt. Mm. I mean, yeah, as I was saying, household debt in Botswana it's a it's a it's a huge challenge. The numbers, in actual fact, I am have even cautioned that as at some point uh, to say that our household debt is so high. Remember, we're a population of two point three million, now, and we've got yeah. four, about four hundred thousand plus uh, working under the formal sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, our loan book, in, uh, just to show you, household debt in twenty twelve was. We have a similar number also in the informal sector. In the informal sector, yeah, just probably about three hundred thousand about. Plus or minus three hundred thousand in the mm -hmm. former sector, um, and in, in twenty twelve, our household debt household debt was sitting at sixteen point one billion, mm -hmm. and sixty seven percent of that was unsecured. Remember, I, I, I talked about secured and unsecured. Sixteen point sixty seven percent of that was mm -hmm. unsecured, or sixteen point one billion. Yeah. And twenty four months down the line, which was twenty fourteen, it went to twenty three point four billion, Oof. and still it over exploded. 60, exploded. Still over sixty percent of it was unsecured. Mm. So. Let me give you the insights here. It, mean, it, it means that we're getting, we're consuming debt to buy things that are not secured. I'm not saying all, all, all of that. Some people take unsecured debt to sort of build houses with it, mm. uh, but they also need understanding of how to really leverage from debt. Mm. But you realize that the numbers don't lie. If if about over if about sixty percent, over sixty percent, it's unsecured. Clearly, it means that those loans, like personal loan, car loans, and all those other ones, uh, mm. credit cards, are the ones that are constituting most of that debt. And in 2018. Mm -hmm. We're sitting at around 30 billion, mm -hmm. you know, 30, 32 billion somewhere there. Mm -hmm. You know, and by the way, right now, if you go and check how much it, of that was unsecured? Uh, it's still around, hovering around the same percentage. By the way, we checked it recently, it's sitting at 37 billion. Uh, and now, you think of it that in 2012, Prime was 16%. All mm. right? Right now, we're looking at Prime, it was cut recently by 50 basis. I think it should be sitting at uh, it, it's been 5.25 now, it should yeah, be, it about be about 4.75. 4 4 yeah. 4 mm. So, do you realize that every time when prime goes down, mm -hmm. interest, uh, but when interest rates go down, mm. uh, household debt goes up? Mm -hmm. uh, because people, what people, when, when, when interest rates go down, people have got a disposable income. Because if I was paying, like you were saying, Ella, that you, you, know, you, don't have, you don't have to always reduce your, your loan installment mm. with, as they reduce, because some people are given loans. Uh, you know, attached to prime. Let's say, for example, you say your loan is prime plus something. Mm, so mm. you f you find that if I'm paying installment of ten thousand, ten thousand pull up, mm. and then pr uh, interest rates go down, mm -hmm. I might pay about eight thousand. Then it means that I've got disposable income of two thousand. Remember, in 2014, uh, there were reports that there were, there, there's liquidity challenges in Botswana. Mm -hmm. So usually. Uh, they call it quantitative easing. When money is introduced into the quantitative system. Quantitative easing. Quantitative easing. Because it can either just be... Just printing money. Just print, or maybe introducing it through. The first step of it is, is, is reducing interest. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the thing. When, when Then money was introduced because interest rates were cut. Mm. So people have got uh, uh, some disposable income. Get, but guess what people do when they've got disposable income? Mm. Yes. When now you're paying 10000 now you're paying 8000 you have 2000 People go out and top up their loans. They take, take new debt uh, or refinance their houses and household debt continuously goes high. Mm. So there is that challenge of, of household debt. And I think you find that uh, in a household, 
a household will have a credit card, a personal loan, a mortgage, uh, a car loan, all at once. Just and they're over leveraged. Mm. So how can you help someone uh, who's new at this understand the difference between good debt and bad debt? Yeah. And I'd like you to give examples. Yes. Uh, good debt versus bad debt. Good debt is any debt that you take to acquire uh, income generating assets. And bad debt is any debt that you acquire uh, to purchase things that will not retain your money. All right. So the other, the other differentiation is here. Bad debt is, is debt that you pay with mm. blood and sweat. Mm. But good debt is debt that is paid by other people. Okay, I've heard it said that one brings money into your pocket, yeah. the other takes money out of your pocket. The other takes money out of your pocket. So that means now we're talking assets and liabilities. Mm. So if you take good debt, is used to acquire assets. Remember, mm. but not only assets, because some people buy houses and they stay in them. They call them assets, but they are liabilities. Mm. As long as it, gener it doesn't generate an income, it's a liability. Mm. When it generates income, it's an asset. And take time to advise Botswana what the attitude should be towards bad debt towards the yeah I've, I've i've got uh, i've got an opportunity to you know talk to you about that you mean your your attitude towards debt yeah i mean generally to <laughs> what, oh, yeah, I you what's the, what's the right attitude to that well, right. my attitude I've, you know it's, it's 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 obviously i share your view about this but i want you to help the viewer yes so that they can yeah. leave this podcast with a better understanding the most important thing is before you take that, ask yourself, what am I using it for? Mm. Is the money going to be paid? Is the installment going to be paid by me with blood and sweat? Or is it, is it going to be paid by other people? Or are other people going to help me pay the debt? Mm. I'll give you an example. If you, let's, take, let's take two people. One goes out and buy a nice car mm. that they, they, they ride on from, work, from their house to work. And then one takes the same amount and go buy a multi-residential property that generates income. It pays the installment and it pays them. So that's the difference because then it mm. means that this person uh, is, has bought something that... Uh, Even if it was a car that he used to rent out to generate income and then the car pays for its installment. Okay, let's give example of cars then. Yeah. This guy bought a car to, that he rents out, or generates income with debt. This one bought a car mm. that doesn't generate income just for, for respect. Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Maslow yeah, hierarchy for yeah, respect. Yeah. There's a difference because this one to generates show off to income. people who don't like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your expression? Yeah, it's actually, is it Will Smith expression? He says, usually we use money that we don't have mm. to buy things that we don't need mm. to impress people that we don't like <laughs> and that don't even like us. So, so you, you, you realize that anytime you, buy, you use debt to acquire something that doesn't generate income, mm -hmm. bad debt. Mm -hmm. So before you, 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 before you go out and take debt, I think maybe you're asking me a question to say, what is it that you need to do mm -hmm. before you take debt? Yeah. Ask yourself, number one, who's going to be paying the debt? Mm. Is it you or other people? Mm. Number two, what interest are you paying on the debts? You, you, know, you, have, you cannot negotiate the interest at any time. Mm. Banks are in competition. We've got 10 commercial banks in Botswana. They want business. So mm. you know, go out and, and negotiate. By the way, other people might ha have the opportunity to have schemes within the organizations where they are able to have lower interest negotiated by the employer. Uh, but even if you don't have group schemes. schemes, group schemes, even if you mm. don't have the schemes, however long you take, you can always negotiate mm. just that people don't, don't know this. And then the other thing is make sure, make sure, that that debt, like I said, installment is paid by other people, mm. but make sure that that debt will help you to even acquire more assets as you go along. There's a guy on uh, YouTube called Jeff Ramsey. He's totally... No, totally Jeff Ramsey is the, is, the, is the local guy. Oh, yeah, Dave, yeah, Dave, Dave Ramsey, <laughs> sorry. Dave Ramsey is totally, totally opposed to debt. And he quotes the Bible and says, it's bad, bad, bad. Um, yeah, but so, does he understand that? Yeah, I, I don't know. He doesn't have any and he says he's got assets. But anyway, here's my question. My question is, if you find yourself in bad debt, how do you get out? Do you just follow J, uh, you know, Dave, Dave Ramsey and, and start getting out of it completely? Or is there some, some middle ground? Yeah, you see, a person like Dave Ramsey will say they don't like debt. I like listening to opposing ideologies. Mm. Dave Ramsey will say, I don't like debt. But a guy like Rubik, Rubik Yosaki will say, understand debt. Mm. and he, he used that to create wealth yeah it's understanding the underlying uh, factor is understanding yeah now but if you find yourself in bad debt which i think as we are talking about the household debt that a lot of us want to find themselves in mm. if you find yourself in bad debt that there are ways in which you can get out the first thing is just to stop getting debt mm. the challenge that we have is we see people trying to get out of debt using debt mm -hmm. you know you can get out of debt using debt it's like you're digging a hole for yourself you're digging a deeper time. one digging a deeper hole mm. uh, ultimately you don't even see the light you are now in some of them debt. say they're consolidating so they can deal with one see i talked about consolidate there's nothing wrong with consolidating 
as long as it's done right. Mm -hmm. Because like I was saying, if you didn't negotiate an interest at a certain bank and you are paying a higher interest, uh, if you consolidate at a lower interest, that means you are paying low. Even though your loan will start from scratch, but at least you are paying low and you have disposable income right now, mm -hmm. which can help you do, to, to, you know, to start creating wealth. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I'm saying is you find that uh, people try, you see the concept that says people uh, you use John's money to pay Peter. Mm. Uh, Rob Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> Rob Peter to pay Paul. Mm. You're trying to get out of debt using debt. But mm. the first step is stop mm. taking more debt. Mm -hmm. Second thing, realize that you have, you, 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 you've, you've got into debt of five years or 25 years. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is it won't take you like a month or two months or three months to get out of that debt. It might take you time. It might even take you that five years to even get out of but at least... Mm. At least you are using the tools that we usually give people. The third one, which key wealth, we can also guide you along these processes. Mm. There are two kinds of ways of getting out of that debt. The other one, we call it debt snowballing. The other one is, is the avalanche uh, concept. Mm. Now, the debt snowballing, uh, let me start with the avalanche. The avalanche concept is where you are able to now see, list all your debts and say, okay, I owe this and this and this, including even le, le ko and thing. Hello, wa kolota, you know, you've got a book there. Go, mm. Just mm. to list each and every person's um, mm each and every person that you owe, mm. and then list all the interest that, that you pay because interests are different. Some debts are expensive, mm. some are cheaper. Mm -hmm. Debt can be cheap or expensive depending on how much you pay as interest. Yes, yes. So you list all the debts, you list all the interest, and then from there, you start now paying the minimum to all the debts. Mm -hmm. And then you take at least whatever uh, extra amount you pay, even if it's 100 pool or whatever, you, can, you pay to one small debt. That's snowballing. Uh, that's snowballing, actually. Yeah. As, uh, I, said, uh, I said I should start with, okay, let me start with start snowballing. It's okay. Mm. You take the, you pay mm. the, the smallest debt, yeah, yeah. right? And then as you pay the smallest debt, you, you finish it, you check all the money you put into another debt. Mm. And then it's like a snowball. It you know the snowballing yeah, effect. It becomes bigger and bigger. Yeah. So snowballing is starting with the smallest debt. Yeah. But avalanche is starting with the one that pays the high, that uh, uh, costs you the high interest. So mm. that's the difference. Snowballing. And, and then when you have a lunch, yeah. the second option of yeah. avalanche, uh, do you, in both options, you attack them at the same time? Or you finish one and go to the other? You, you, can, you can choose to use either one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you snowball, obviously you're going to start with the, with, the smallest, with the one that is the smallest debt in terms of the balance. Mm. And then you take that instrument, you move into the next one. The next but one, you need the cooperation of your creditors. Uh, most of them won't agree. That's if... Like I said, when you snowball, you are paying the minimum mm -hmm. installment in all of them. Okay. But you are paying extra on the smallest, well, the one with the smallest balance. Oh, okay. The, the smallest balance. So that, so that you finish it first and then you take the whole installment, put it into the next smaller okay. one. Then you are snowballing uh, as you go along. So is there one that is more advantageous than the other? Or it, de just it depends on the, the, the loans you have. It depends on your disposable income. Your circumstances. Your circumstances. Your creditors as well. So, yeah, so it's yeah. not... Uh, it's different strokes for different folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but you can get out of bad debt. I think some people have given up and now they're taking even more debt. But uh, like, you know, we, we would like to advise them that don't give up. You can actually take, get out of debt and, and, and start be on the, on the green side. How can you become a king of debt? Use debt to make wealth. That is the next point. Yes, you can. Mm. Because debt is leverage. Yeah, but how do you do it? Yeah. I've seen people... Who used to qualify for a certain amount? Let's say the moment you start working, what, do, what is it that people ask for? Uh, what's the first thing that people ask when, they, when, when the moment they start working? I mean, after probation, they go to the bank and check how much they qualify for. Mm. Now, what is the first thing they buy? The first thing they buy is a car. Mm -hmm. And now, after they buy a car, then they check how much they qualify for a mortgage. So mm. the first mistake that people do is they buy a car before they buy a mortgage, mm -hmm. before they take a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So then they, they then qualify for less because there is an installment of a car mm. uh, that, that, that is deducting from the amount. So it's about progressive investing and sequential investing. That's the only way you can use that. Mm. What do I mean by this? Let's start with progressive. Prog <laughs> progressive investing? Mm. Progressive investing says that you must always invest in something that will help you to invest in the next thing. Mm. So that means, that means if I qualify for a certain amount, uh, I must go out, let's say if I qualify for, let's give numbers for example. Mm. I qualify for 500,000. Yeah. The first mistake you, you, you shouldn't do is don't buy a house you stay in. Mm -hmm. Don't buy a house you stay in. No, you shouldn't. First, mm. like there's a guy called Grant Cardone. Mm. He says he, he, he rents where he stays and also where, where, he, he, where, he, yeah, where he ends. Mm. He, he, he rents where he stays. Mm. But and other houses and where he earns yeah. income, yeah. 
uh, that, that, that's what he owns. Mm. All right. So you find that people make me because I clearly we are coming from an era where we wanted to have a house was one of the things that we were told to be an asset that you, when you start working by a house. Yeah, we were misled. So we use debt to do that and then we stay in the house. That's the first mistake that, that people do. So progressive investing is when you take debt, make sure that the first house will generate income so that you can invest in the second one. Mm. So that you are not stuck in the first one and you can't be able to invest in the second one. And it's like you are, you are continuously going to the, 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 the third, the fourth, just like that. What about sequential? Sequential is so, it, it's in a way that you analyze and say, where will I be able to get more return? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you, go if you go build, just take two places, your home village, mm -hmm. And, 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 and maybe Mokoditani, for example. Mm. Your home village, let's say, go mm. Or maybe let's say your home village, you go Soroe, for example. Mm. Soroe, yes, you might have a rental and you might have a plot in Soroe. Mm. But the question is, sequentially, will you, let's say you have two plots, you have one in, in Mokoditani and you have one in Soroe. Which one will you develop first so that you can progressively invest? Yeah. The one that, the the one one. That, bring, that gives you uh, a return so that you can do progressive yeah. investing. So that people Where have, the rentals are higher. Or the rentals where are higher. there's a better prospects of occupation. That's the thing. So people have used debt to mm. be able to acquire more. So I've seen people that used to qualify for like 500,000. Mm. And now because they've got another asset and they value those assets, they now qualify for a million. Mm -hmm. they now, I, I mean, I'm one of the people that when I was young, I had an opportunity to have like a one million. You're still pool. young, by the way. I'm still young. <laughs> but I'm talking I'm when still I was young. <laughs> you're still young. I'm talking when I was 27. I had the opportunity because I, because I, 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 I kind of saw this thing earlier. I started the developing, building, uh, buying houses, develop, uh, developing and selling. Yeah. When I was 27, I had the opportunity to refinance the houses that I was developing. Mm. And, I, and I had one million in my account. Yeah. It's one of the crazy things to, 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 to <laughs> have. Because if you don't understand money, it can go crazy. Yeah. But at least I had, uh, I was grounded because I had, uh, you know, re very... Re you, good you didn't start values. bowling like some guy. Yeah, I put it back into <laughs> investing. Because I refinanced. The good thing, the thing about refinancing is, Whatever, whichever commercial bank you refinance with, they'll put money into your account. Mm. So it's the discipline that is important. Okay. But people go out and splash the money. Mm. So that's what so in terms of uh, king of debt, there are people who have made who have made so much wealth using debt. The only thing what will then happen is that what they are paying to the bank will be less than what they are earning. Mm -hmm. So they will, they will end up now, let's say you're having 100,000 as rental income mm -hmm. or as passive income. It doesn't have to only be rental income, mm -hmm. business income, rental income, however income that you have used that debt for. Mm -hmm. You'll be generating maybe 200,000, but you're paying 100,000 to the bank. Mm -hmm. Or you're generating 150,000, but you're paying 100,000 to the bank. Keep the difference. So the difference is yours. So that's how, that's how that's you know, how you're they able win. to. Yeah. yeah. Now let's talk as we get to the conclusion of our time together. Uh, what is the impact of reduction of interest rate on my debt? We, you touched on this earlier, but we've seen recently during COVID, while we were in quarantine, that there was a reduction by 50 basis points yeah. from Bank of Botswana. How does that help or hinder our progress? Yeah, it, it doesn't hinder our progress as individuals mm. because uh, it helps us to have disposable income. Because if you was paying a certain amount and my loan is linked to prime mm -hmm. uh, and prime is reduced by 50 basis it means that my installment will reduce mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so if i was over leveraged and uh, 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 i was tight in terms of my monthly income at least now i can brief yeah i can start now buying uh, grocery for my kids if i was unable to mm. uh, in terms of debt and what the impact that it has in your loans is that like i was saying your installment will start go you, you start going down number two you can qualify for more than what you used to qualify for mm -hmm. uh, because it, debt is based on interest. Yeah. It's based on interest. So then people, if you used to qualify for, let's say, 400,000, maybe you are qualifying for qualify 150,000. Mm. Because what you qualify for is based on the installment that you pay. pay yeah. And then they'll say, okay, with this installment, you, you, you can qualify for this amount. Mm. So that means if the installment goes down, the money you qualify for goes up. So yeah. it, it, it's time for us to invest in our financial literacy to see what is, what is it that we can do with two things, with the disposable income that we're having because mm. the installments have gone down, and also with more debt that you, we qualify for. Yeah. What is it that we can do? Uh, but we shouldn't also forget ourselves because if you look at the financial crisis that happened in the U.S., the household crisis. 0809. Uh, the housing crisis, yeah, mm. 0809. Mm. Interest rates kept on going low, 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 low because they, you know, people were over leveraged and they, they ended up reducing interest rates so that people can breathe. Mm. But if they, if they go towards zero, they won't go down forever. 
Well, I, I'm not an economist, but I but I but I've studied the financial because I'm a personal financial educator. Yeah. But I can tell you if they go down at some point they'll go up. Yeah. So if they go up, the question is can you survive? Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. what happened in, in, in the States when they went a bit up and then people couldn't afford to pay yeah. installments because they were over leveraged. So that's the question then is mm. uh, if you then uh, have access to debt mm -hmm. and you can qualify for a certain amount are you mm -hmm. investing it in income generating assets or you are excited because then you can qualify for the car that you always want yeah yeah the fanciest so, one yeah so debt in, <laughs> in, in 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 all all its entirety is not bad mm. it, it the, it's us who make it bad mm. Our, there's this quote that i that i always use that the uh, money doesn't have a problem mm. the problem comes with things that we want yeah you know, you can generate a certain amount and you can live within a certain means and invest the difference in income generating assets and so, leverage so debt. So debt really is like a knife. It depends whether it's in the hands of a murderer or on a chef. Or, or yeah. A chef or somebody who knows how to use it. Or if you cut people or you cut meat. Yeah. Or like cow meat. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> Okay, yeah. but as a general proposition, do you think interest rates will continue to go down given that in the West it's almost, what, zero? Yeah. Sometimes they, uh, they, they, they give you money without interest. Yeah. Um, you see, if, if we continuously uh, are not financially educated, mm. and uh, because, you know, when we're over leveraged, it affects disposable income. Yeah. And economy runs with another means spending is another means income. If that means if um, if my, our household is over leveraged right now and we can't spend money uh, at the shops, it means shops don't make income. Yeah. The economy becomes tightened. Yeah. So uh, then clearly we have to create more wealth so that we can spend more and uh, this. As more we income. conclude, let me pick you a brain on one little point here. All right. Still on the subject of debt, it seems to me that we can look at it on a bigger scale in terms of countries. What has happened since independence? We've seen a lot of African countries going to the IMF, going to the World Bank borrowing money, large quantities of money, and be subjected to these conditionalities. They are called structural adjustment programs. My research says that none of them have ever worked and that countries that were subjected to structural adjustment have suffered even more. And some have argued that it's the reason why Africa is stuck and is not moving forward. So I'm just wondering what your views are uh, in terms of this tendency of African countries to go f from to borrow from the World Bank or the IMF where they are told, one, devalue your currency, two, you have to now also cut down the civil service, and then three, and then it's been argued that it has led to more corruption and more abuse and more impoverishment. It has. I don't know, I don't know whether you have any observations of your own. Yeah, you know, every time you borrow someone money it, it, and they have lack of how to use it, you are impoverishing them because they're always going to come back. Mm. And you know that if you come back to me and I've borrowed you money, you are enslaved to me because you have to beg. Mm. So clearly, uh, you know, when you look at history, African countries have always been, uh, you know, borrowing money without realizing that they have got so much, you know, to, to offer over before they can go and borrow money. Mm. Even Paul Kagame, I remember I read this, uh, a quote recently from him when he said, uh, rather we don't need more money from the West or from wherever. We just need to basically look at ourselves and leverage because mm. more ideas and more, mm. more, more knowledge of how things work. Mm. So that's the thing. So sometimes when I, you know, when you borrow me, look at look at. Uh, we don't want to sound controversial though, but look at China right now is borrowing African countries so much money. Mm. So every time when when you borrow me money, you you're giving me let's say a million pula. Mm. That money has interest. Yeah. And the interest is going to be paid over time. Mm. And over time it means that I can continuously top up and you know uh, yeah. uh, refi whatever. I can get yeah. more money from you. And here's the thing about it. If you think about how it works. It's not just Chinese. Yeah. Uh, you're, not, you, you're thinking not in terms of just the, the World Bank and the IMF, but also the Chinese. Oh, the World Bank, Both the West IMF, and the, the East. Yeah. Everyone that borrows us money. Uh, imposes uh, conditions. They impose conditions and we're also enslaved to them mm. because we're always going to continuously have to pay them. But by the way, if you look at uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio of many countries, mm. you find that some countries are over leveraged. I mean, if you look at America is sitting at over 100 well, Greece was sitting at over 100%. Mm. Uh, Japan, over 100%. Mm. Uh, no, South Africa is sitting about 70%. Okay, we're still low in terms of mm. debt what to GDP. What percent are we? I'll have to check that. Uh, yeah. I'll have to check that. How, yeah, but it's manageable. But it's, but it's manageable. Right. But here's the thing about it. If we continue continuously borrow, it means that we're indebted to whoever has given us the money. Mm. Here's the thing. Now, even if it's political, you find that 
the, whoever is the, holding the regime at that point is not the it's not the person who's going to be paying back that money. Yeah. So they can take the money now. It's generations to come. Knowing that the next generation will, will be the one that su su will be suffering. Remember, I said earlier that uh, it's actually you like destroying the future, isn't it? See. I said, when you borrow money without understanding, without using it wisely, it's like borrowing money from the future and say, give me all that money, let me use it now, and I can suffer later paying it back. But mm. who are you stealing it from? You're stealing it from future generation, from your children. Yeah. So clearly it means that we are not uh, taking care of our future generation by, by, mis by misusing money that countries. we're borrowing. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I hope that enlightenment is coming through. I hope people are becoming aware now. People are becoming aware and I hope uh, even the current administration will be able to, uh, I'm hopeful and optimistic that they, they are looking at things in a way yeah. uh, that would help. See, the other, the other thing is, do you know that African countries are the most richest? Yeah, they are in terms of resources. Yeah, but then, uh, the most uh, abundant uh, con uh, continent is Africa. Yeah, rich people borrow money for investments they don't borrow money to survive. Yeah. Yeah. So we need we then need to ask ourselves what are we borrowing money for? Yeah. Yeah. What are we really borrowing? What are we money investing for? in? What are we investing in? And every, and every time we talk investment, it should be income generating. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's cut it short there. Um we you and I can go on forever. Mm -hmm. I want you to speak to the listener there and invite them to subscribe to our channel. I would also want you to give them uh, your contact yeah. details so that they can uh, they can acquire more knowledge and more information and possibly give you uh, give you work you know yeah I mean we teach financial literacy this this thing is will only survive if people uh, or people only survive in this financial trying times when they understand how money works mm. before it works for them mm. understanding debt and how de they can leverage debt so you can call us at key wealth at three nine eight zero three two one three nine eight zero three two one and our website is triple w dot key wealth the co w the co the bw key or local land wealth wakuma key for unlocking wealth unlocking your financial success and i uh, i'm mohomuti france mohomuti patrick france i've got a, a facebook page is mohomuti france speaks and i also have got a youtube channel uh it's mohomuti france online so go and subscribe to my channel and i also uh, I recommend you to subscribe for Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom. Just click the, the, the subscribing but, uh, button is down here and uh, make sure that you also click the bell so that you see more videos as he posts them. These are mostly insightful and I know that you are interviewing a lot of people mm. uh, with, from different walks of life that can teach people a lot. Each one, teach one. When we educate each other, we'll be able to take Botswana forward. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, dear You're listener. Welcome. Thank you.